to unless we have news here courtesy of Sky Sports concerning the final England squad that it feels like um, Gareth Southgate probably you know chickened out of a little bit by naming four centre backs I mean so four right backs which is legitimately one of the most insane things I've seen in a long time but hey you live and go on so this is courtesy of let me see if it's loading on Twitter so I can see the actual final squad list oh there it is so the final squad list reads as follows goalkeepers you've got Dean Henderson Sam Johnson Jordan Pickford I don't think there's any sort of surprises there um goalkeepers kind of pick themselves then uh, defenders you've got Trent Alexander-Arnold Ben Chilwell Connor, Connor Cody Reese James Harry Maguire Tyro Mings Luke Shaw John Stones Kieran Trippier the only thing I'd say in terms of that list of people I'd say taking four right backs is quite insane if you think about it right in Trent Alexander Arnold Reese James uh Kieran Trippi and Carl Walker it obviously means that Solskjaer was I mean Solskjaer so he might as well be Solskjaer Southgate was struggling to make an actual decision on who his number let say his top two center backs would be because I don't think any other team in your Euros is going to take that many right backs I know full backs are very important in modern day football but in terms of taking four who play all in the same position it seems a little bit odd um, maybe it means one of them is going to play a little bit further forward maybe it's Trent Alexander might, Trent Alexander Arnold might play in midfield he hasn't necessarily played there that often in Liverpool himself people would say he's definitely more of a ball playing right back as opposed to a defender he's not the best defender in the world which is why a lot of people had doubts about him but again, the media campaigns around Trent Alexander-Arnold, especially towards the end of the season, I don't get me wrong, he did turn it on himself. I think the last five or six games he played out of his skin. So he was clearly given a ultimatum, like, you know, make the decision hard for me in terms of my England squad and I may be considered taking you. And he stepped up to the plate and then performed. But every single time he would put in a half-decent cross, you know, the Sky Sports commentators who are more often than not, you know, Liverpool fans or closeted Liverpool fans would be coming in their pants about it the cross that he put in the pass that he did like it was just really overboard and it really let you know that sometimes it really does help if you have friends in the media in terms of how you're viewed as a football player in England um, especially if you're not playing for some of the bigger teams you really do need somebody to maybe champion you um, within those Sky Sports studios BT studios um, talk sport you need somebody to really really be shouting about you from the highest rooftops because if not no one's going to take any real notice of what you're doing um Center backs is a bit worrying to take Harry Maguire considering he's not he wasn't fit enough to play in the Europa League final. Um, again, maybe it's just a sentimental thing, which is again completely insane when you think of the um, pressure that's going to be on the player. Just having somebody there just for the vibes doesn't really make any sense to me. And again, you're playing against some of the best teams in Europe um, with some of the best attacking talent. Taking a half fit Maguire surely isn't the best way to go forward. And again, Maguire isn't transformational in a way that you know a modern day Virgil van Dijk is nowadays so why would they feel it that necessary to even take him in the first place what difference is it really going to make to have a Harry Maguire in the squad vis-a-vis uh, -vis him not being in the squad especially when you think of you know I forgot who the player is plays for Aston Villa who's at centre back he's had a very good season um, and again there's fairly there's you know John Stones Tyron Mings all these players can do decent enough jobs Connor Cody and stuff they're not gonna you know they're not world beaters but they're good enough to do a job so it's really interesting that he did that um, midfielders Jude Bellingham Jordan Henderson Mason Mount Calvin Phillips Declan Rice um, I guess Jordan Henderson's another one who hasn't been fit the last few seasons last few games of the season I think he might have taken a position of James Ward-Prowse who'd probably be unlucky at not getting a spot in the team but again would he have played anyway probably not so it's a weird thing because Southgate clearly has his favourites so if he has his favourites what's the point of taking people who are just going to sit on the bench throughout the entire tournament and not play you know he might as well take players that he's actually going to you know end up rotating and stuff going forward and then forwards they've got Dominic Calvert-Lewin Phil Foden Jack Grealish who I'm really happy about seeing there because you know he ended the season quite badly with his injury and stuff and I was thinking because he doesn't play with some of the big marquee clubs you never know you know they might end up leaving him out there but he's going to be the real um, the real kind of killer when it comes to um, who performs best for England in the Euros you got Harry Kane Marcus Rashford Bukayo Sacco Jadon Sancho and Raheem Sterling 
Marcus Rashford is probably lucky to get into that team. If you think about people that are in form playing well, um, Jesse Lingard is very lucky not to get in there, especially considering the last six months or so that he's played well at West Ham. Um, it's just, you know, the same way people are saying that, oh, he's only played well the last six games because you know, double signers is insane. Um, Trent Alexander-Arnold played pretty poorly the first half of the season, turned it on the second half of the season, or maybe the, the second the last quarter of the season and he now he's back in the England squad and no one's really saying much but then when people bring up Jesse Lingard's name and say oh he only played well for one half of the season right because he got Wednesday went on loan uh, from January going onwards but he still performed he still outperformed Marcus Rashford I think he's maybe the second highest scoring Englishman um, outside of Harry Kane right even above someone like a Dominic Calvin lewin and you imagine for the versatility of uh, uh, Jesse Lingard the fact that he can play in midfield he can play up front um, his way of playing in terms of his one-two touches, his a bit, you know his pace off the ball, his pace on the ball, um, he's kind of you know he's basically a really good impact sub as well. Even if he doesn't start, he's really good coming on for the bench. Um, he's a big game player. He's had you know some very sterling performances for um, England in the Euros and of course in the World Cup. You'd imagine he'd be a great addition overall to this kind of squad harmony. He's a good vibes guy. Do you know what I mean? Very popular with people within that England setup. But again, sometimes when favourites are there, favourites are there. So there is obviously some remit for him actually maybe still getting the squad because I can easily see some of these strikers, especially someone like a Marcus Rashford, who just the other day was saying that he was been injured since September. It's odd that he's to go into the Euros, but again, you know, let it be, let it be. He's speaking to Barack Obama, so it makes sense, I guess, for some people. So let's see, man. It's a fairly decent squad. Again, no real big surprises, I think, overall, especially when you consider Southgate's, you know, other um, call-ups that he does throughout the year, especially in the friendlies and stuff, it gives a good indication of who he kind of favours going forward. Um, it's just a right-back situation that's a real cop-out in my in my head. I think all the debates over over the start of the season about who he's going to take and the idea that he might have to leave Trent Alexander-Arnold at home kind of made him, you know, include four in a setup. is just wild. Four right-backs is just <laughs> legitimately one of the most insane things I've ever seen in my life. But hey, let's see maybe it won't really count for nothing anyway because it's very unlikely that England will progress that far going forward I think it's very very unlikely